I'm Mary Marinville and welcome back to my Ventura County Sustainable Farmer of the Month. Today is September 1st and I'm here in Ojai and it's a beautiful cold crisp morning and I'm here with Jim Churchill and he is a pixie tangerine grower. Jim, what can you tell us about your farm? We grow on uh, 17 acres. Uh, it's my wife, Lisa Brennis, and I, and we grow on 17 acres. We have two main varieties of tangerine, the Ojai Pixie Tangerine and the Seedless Kishu Tangerine. We also grow pages and Oro Blancos and Satsumas and Shastas and Tahos and uh, a whole bunch of other varieties of fruit and pomelos. And we have some avocados. We have Hass, Fuerte, Bacon, and Mexicola Grande, and Pinkerton avocados. That's amazing. So you're mainly a citrus grower, and you throw in a few avocados here and there. And... We have about 12 acres of citrus and about 3 acres of avocados. Yeah. Can you tell us about the history, the interesting family history sure. of this farm and how long it's been in your family? Yeah. Um, m my dad originally bought uh, 40 acres of land in 1970 or 71, something like that. And he, there was a house on it and he carved out the house and sold the house um, and that got him the money to plant an orchard. And he planted 37 and a half acres of bacon avocados. And I came down to run the bacons in, I was in Sacramento and I became unemployed. And uh, in 1978, I came down here. Um, I had grown up in Ojai and always wanted to live here. Uh, so this was something I could do and live in Ojai. And we had the 37 and a half acres of bacon avocados. And he planted bacons because the ground is too cold for Hass. But... Um, Right around the time I started selling our first crop of bacons, the the market disappeared for bacons. They're, they're, ba they're not very good. They don't taste particularly good, and they're thin-skinned, and they don't ship. And the avocado business, the industry as a whole, just said, why are we supporting these this variety? It's no good. We're going to do Hass. And we were left with 37 and a half acres of bacons, and they had a, a Phytophthora um, infection. It's a soil-borne fungus called Phytophthora cinnamomai or root rot and it looked like it was going to kill all the all the avocados. They were just dying and I was going around cutting them down and fumigating the ground and it just was endless and, and so I began looking for something else to plant and um, one day I was down at the Friends Ranch's packing house with Tony Thatcher um, and I just pulled something out of a bin and I peeled it and I ate it and I said, Tony, what's this? What's this? And he said, that's a pixie tangerine. And I said, well, do you sell them? And he said, you know, I only have two trees and by the time I'm done selling all of my dancies, which is another variety, mm -hmm. by the time I'm done selling all my dancies, my kids have eaten all my pixies. And that was my market research. I said, yeah. Okay, I, you know, in Ohio. So did you hear that kids were the test? They, they're the ones who chose oh, the totally, pixie. Totally, kids eat it, mm, I want to grow it. Um, so in Ohio, you grow avocados or citrus mostly because we have too rocky, the ground is too rocky to grow row crops mostly. So I didn't want to grow oranges. I, I, I just didn't want to be a sun-kissed grower. I wanted to grow something I could sell myself. You understand in 1978 or 1980 when this was going on, Nobody was selling their own, or hardly anybody was selling their own fruit. Tony's father-in-law, Elmer. They would sell it to Sunkist, and Sunkist yeah, would yeah. sell it to the grocery stores. Yeah, and my model was actually Tony's father-in-law, Elmer Friend, because he sold direct. And I thought, you know, I knew people could do it. I just had never done it myself, and people didn't generally do it. But I wanted to grow something I could sell myself, and I thought these tangerines were amazing. And so I got some budwood and planted out some tangerines, and... Um, and then I got so enthusiastic about having planted my first 80 trees that I ordered another 120 trees. And then my father said, uh, said, son, you don't really know how you're going to sell this fruit. Why don't I think you should not plant any more trees until you see if you can sell it. He was, he was not stupid, my dad. So I had 120 trees that I'd paid for down at the nursery and I sold them to Tony. And so Tony and I have been growing Ojai Pixies since the 1980, 81, 82, something like that. Mm -hmm. And as we got 
as our trees grew up and we started selling the fruit, um, I was selling wholesale and Tony was selling at farmer's markets. And other people began to notice that we were doing okay with the pixies, you know, okay, pretty good. So other people started planting pixies and probably sometime in the 90s, maybe 94, 95, um, Tony and I got together and thought we would do better for everybody if we all work together instead of... Uh, so you formed an association. We a- formed an informal group that, yeah, um, to market Ojai Pixie Tangerines. And there's now there's 36 families that grow Pixie Tangerines in the Ojai Valley. And we market them all as Ojai Pixie Tangerines. We have our own carton, our own label. And this is one of the only places, if not one of the... In the it- United States, it's grows and markets their own pixie tangerines. It is the only place that does pixie tangerines. There are location like there's uh, Wenatchee Valley apples and there's um, cherries from the northwest and there's pears from northeastern California and areas are known for certain things but um, we're the only location branded um, tangerine. Here comes Brian with a tractor. It's going to be noisy. So what can you tell us about the pixie? When does it um, when does the buds come? When does it? What, what is the growth cycle? When does it ripen? Okay, we're gonna wait for Brian to pass. I think. I don't think so. You don't need to, right? No, you don't need to. Wait. Okay, fine. Um, so, uh, well, all citrus pretty much in the Ojai Valley sets its uh, uh, blossoms in April, and that's why April in Ojai is so incredible because it's full of orange blossoms. Oh, it smells gorgeous here in the month of April. Right, and um, and. And then it, it, the fruit begins to show, you know, its little BB-sized fruit in May. And we can take a little walk and, and look at some fruit Wonderful. now. It's September and the fruit is getting to be that big. Um, and I can see that th- there might be a, a crop for next year. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> That's what we want. We want you to have yeah. a lot of fruit for us. Yeah, yeah. Because we love your pixie tangerines. So, um, th- now let me just say about the pixie tangerine. It has some characteristics that are kind of useful. Um, it's seedless, which back in 1980 when I planted them, I didn't know it was going to be a big deal, but it's a big deal. A big People deal. prefer to eat a, a, a seedless tangerine. It's pretty easy to peel. It's not the absolute easiest. It's not that sort of zipper skin thing where the skin just falls off, but you get your thumb under there and it just comes off in a, in a spiral. It's quite easy to peel. And um, so kids can, it's kid friendly. Um, and um, it's sweet, which is Oh, they're delicious. They're <laughs> absolute. All he has to say is they are delicious. I've find them now and I eat them and they just they are they just you know what they just open up into your mouth and it's just sweet and delicious love it and then finally they hold on the tree so they start to get ripe in the west end of the valley sort of up the up uh, Maricopa where Tony and Emily are mm-hmm. it starts to get ripe at the sort of the end of February we don't get ripe here until probably April we're like a month behind them Actually, in the same valley, we are a month later than they are. So we can start to find the pixies at farmers markets March. in March, yeah. April, and now you're you said you're but just coming to the end. There's just you're just finding a few on the trees. That's correct. But so they hold on the tree. There are varieties like the Satsuma, or the seedless Kishu, or the Page, which. Um, get ripe and then they have their time and then they fall off the tree or they get to be no good. Mm-hmm. The pixie holds on the tree and stays good. I have I have sold them wholesale as late as, as September. Um, you know, I mean, they and you'll still see them. Friends are still packing them. I mean, they still have them and they're still in the local markets. Mm-hmm. Now, do you deliver them to schools at all? Are you... Do you... We, we do sell to schools. Um, mostly we work... Um, we, through the Bay Area, we work through some some people called the the Fruit Guys who mm-hmm. sell to to schools, and here we sell through um, the Berry Man, 
and okay. they they sell. And the Berry Man is out of Santa Barbara. They're the, they're a whole they're a wholesale fruit distributor that has school accounts, and they sell to Ventura Unified and Ojai, and also in the Santa Barbara area. Wonderful. And you are also the president of Food for Thought. So while we're talking about schools and delivering fruit to schools. Why is nutritious food and food for thought so important to you? Well, um, you really are what you eat, you know, and if you eat junk, then you got junk in you and you're going to more or less um, perform as if you had junk in you. And if you have real f food in you, like we grew up, our ancestors grew up eating with it not processed commercial fruit, f food but just food whole food whole food you're just going to do better you're going to get you're going to get the complete range of everything you need to be strong and healthy mm -hmm. and um, and to perform well yeah i remember as a child not eating you know eating frozen food and not eating good food and now i'm adult an adult and i'm educated and i eat nutritious whole food salad fruit and I have much more energy, much more clarity. Yeah, got to yeah. eat the colors, got to eat the colors. <laughs> well, thank you. Is there anything else that you want to pass on to the teachers of Ventura County and to the kids? Is there anything else that you'd like to tell them? Um, eat good food, eat good food, eat local as much as you can. Buy pixie tangerines, <laughs> please. And, um, and be healthy, be well. All right, and so what website, what's your website? I know I'm holding a bumper sticker here, and I think um, it's... There's a couple. There's a couple of websites you can go to. Um, um, my wife and I, Lisa, our personal website is uh, tangerineman.com, and you can see all about our, our, our orchard and our operation. And then if you go to ojaipixies.com, all one word, O-J-A-I, pixies, um, you there's a it's a website for all 36 families that grow pixie tangerines and uh, you can see about a lot of the other farms in the Ojai Valley that grow pixies. Wonderful so if you want to learn more about pixie tangerines and what Mr. Jim Churchill does and about his farm please go to those websites tangerineman.com and ojaipixietangerine.com thank you. So. so we're here, and, and it's September 1st, and I'm picking what Jim told me is a shiner, which is one of the last ripe pixie tangerines. So um, we've got one here, and he's going to show me how to peel it. You get your um, thumb through the top, and then it pretty much will, you can, it'll more or less come off in one piece, the skin if you're an expert. But that's your challenge, kids. You want to see if you can peel it in, with, in just one peel. And I think he's actually gonna do it. He did it. That is amazing. You're a genius. No, I'm not. <laughs> I just grew and we're both, up. And we're both gonna try them together? Yeah. Okay. And you're, so you're these were both. not picked during the harvest because they were too green. But this is, here, the harvest started in April and it went through June. Um, but here it is September, and they're still on the fruit and on the tree, and they're pretty good, I think. Oh my God! They're getting just the littlest bit woody, but um, it's delicious. Good. It's delicious. Oh. Have, so try one. You can see mm -hmm. we have next year's crop on the tree. It's it's uh, this is these are the flowers that were this this is from the flowers of. Uh, that, that, that blossomed in April and sat as fruit in, in May. Got that? <laughs>
<laughs> Thank you, Jim. No sense in pretending the camera is. And they are delicious. So try a pixie tangerine. Soon. We're still here at the farm, and, and Jim keeps pointing out these um, things that we should know and observe, and he's telling me that this is um, a project that he's proud of. And can you tell us a little bit more about what, um, is this Brian, or? No, this is Luis, and then... What um, Luis is doing behind us? Yeah, Luis is... Uh, so Brian and Luis, Brian on the tractor and Luis on the rake, are... Uh, we're, we're doing a mulching project. We're going to mulch four inches deep, um, about 80% in the rows. We're going we're, to... We're, what we're doing is we're building soil where the roots are and we're conserving water. I, I irrigate with little uh, micro sprinklers in... I have hoses that run from tree to tree and in between the the trees is a little riser with a little that puts out a spray and that's where the irrigation goes and this conserves the water so that my water use is 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 less which is important because water is i don't know it's a twenty twenty two thousand dollar a year expense for us and it also this stuff degrades over the years and 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 becomes fabulous fabulous soil so it's just a mulching project that it's a sustainability. It's good for the environment. You're creating and building healthy soil, and and you're um, you're decreasing topsoil erosion by doing this as well. We don't have any topsoil erosion. We have so many. We have so many weeds in the ground that there's no no blowing away of topsoil and we don't till so there's no there's no topsoil loss. And this also helps conserve water as it well. Cons yeah, it conserves water and builds soil. Great. Well, thank you for doing this for us and thank you for your sustainability efforts. That's sure. something to be really proud of in Ventura County. Thank you.